Good morning, artists and friends. At least it's morning where I am now here in Tampa, Florida. Welcome to Monet Cafe. Today I'm in my home studio and I thought it was a great opportunity for me to go over some of the questions that you guys have about different surfaces for painting on pastels. I do have another video where I talked about surfaces and different pastels, but I'm going to give a little more time to this one and focus just on the papers and the surfaces. Um, and I've got my Monet Cafe coffee cup here, having a nice cup of coffee this morning. Hang on while I take a sip. Mmm. I love days like this. All right, so we're going to get into, first of all, why can't we just use regular paper um, or watercolor paper or whatever um, with when using pastels? This happens to be my set of iridescent pastels I got from the Mount Vision Pastel Company that actually is located here in Tampa, Florida. It was great that I got to tour the company and get these beautiful iridescent pastels. They're real sparkly. Um, and they have one of the largest selections of iridescence as most companies. They even have a set of darks, which I got. But anyway, I'm using these as an example. Pastels are dusty, okay? And if you were to use these just on a regular piece of drawing paper, or even if you go to craft stores, they sell a paper that's called pastel. I can't do this both my fingers in quotes. Pastel paper. Uh, it's actually not really good for pastels. I mean, you might can get a little bit of layering done on there. But the point is that with a flat paper that does not have a sanded surface, your pastels are just going to, you can get one layer down maybe, but then as you start adding pastels, they start getting muddy colored. They're not as brilliant and they kind of fall off. So it's hard to work on a smoother type of surface. So we literally use products um, for papers that have a sanded surface, kind of like sandpaper in a hardware store. I wish I had a sample of that. I've actually bought some cheap, um, a hardware store sandpaper and done pastels on them just as an example I would go with a finer grit not a real coarse grit though it'll eat up all your pastels so let's talk about some of these papers here and hopefully you'll learn something uh, when I get ready to do a painting I have choices to make as to what kind of surface am, am I going to use now if you're just starting out as a beginner this might be overwhelming. Oh my goodness, I can't afford to get all of that stuff. So just start with something simple. Try one and then go from there, okay? A good, good paper to use is U-Art paper, okay? This is, uh, they come in different grits. Uh, this is, or grades. This is 400. It's pretty fine. I think it actually goes up to a 600, maybe even an 800. I can't remember. But it's great because it's got a fine grit, but it allows for a lot of layering. And I like the nice neutral color. It's not white. It's just kind of a, a creamy um, off-white color. Okay, so that's UART paper. I get them in big sheets and cut them down, but you can get them in smaller sections in a little um, packet uh, of papers that they will send you. Okay, so UART paper is great. I'll see if I can give some examples of paintings on each of these. All right, so there's a nice piece of UART paper. And... Uh, let me go to the ones that I didn't make first, okay? These are the one, these are homemade surfaces here, and I'll show you how you do that. But now, this is another one that I love. It is Le Carte Pastel Paper, and it's made by Sennelier. Me with my southern accent, I usually get all these names wrong, but I think I finally got this one. Sennelier. Um, La Carte Pastel Paper. I think I used to say Sennelier or something like that. Anyway, you don't have to be able to say it to be able to paint on it. Praise the Lord. Um, so here is a pad of paper that I get that has various colors in it, okay? It's got the browns. I've used a lot of them out of here so you can't see all the colors. They don't show it on here. Does it show it on the back? No. Uh, but anyway, I like they have kind of like a a tealish gray one that I've used all of them. But anyway, so these are really nice. I actually like working on dark surfaces too. But the LeCarte paper is really coarse. The grit on this one is 360. It feels more coarse than that to me. Um, but I like it. I think it lends more towards an impressionistic feel. It keeps me very focused on my strokes and making sure I'm having efficiency of stroke and not overdoing things. And I love the loose feel that I achieve with the LeCarte pastel card. Some people like it, some people don't. So uh, that's kind of a personal preference. Now we also have um, the Canson. A lot of people, Canson's kind of like the one I was saying in the uh, craft stores you can get. You can get a Canson paper. It's not really a pastel paper. I see some people do great work on it, but um, this Canson paper is a little bit more for pastel, okay? It's called the 
mitantes, is that right? So people are, were correcting me. I was saying it like Spanish, like mitantes, but it's French, okay? Mi, mitantes or something like that. <laughs> Touch, okay? So um, this one is not as, um, doesn't allow as much layering. It's kind of fine, but it doesn't have the same grit that the other two do. So I, I like this paper, but I don't feel you can get quite the layering as the other papers. But I do think this one is less expensive, okay? I'm not going to go over all the cost of these. But they can get kind of pricey, which is why sometimes I make my own. Um, but you can get these and you can, the pad, and you can cut them up. That's a good way if you're just beginning. Don't take a whole piece like this and do a big painting. Cut them up into some smaller sections and just have some studies that you do, you know, to practice with and get better, okay? So this is another nice Canson product, okay? Here is another one of the um, already prepared surfaces you can buy. I like this product a lot, and I find myself forgetting to use it. It's actually a board. Now, the advantage of this is you don't have to mount it or anything when you're done, and sometimes these other papers, uh, UART paper, can actually kind of curl and warp in humid climates. Um, I do have a video on how to fix that problem if you ever have that problem. So, um, but this one, you don't have to worry about that. It's a hard pastel board. It's really nice. Um, it's ready to frame. Uh, this is an 11 by 14 gray. I like working on a um, surface that has a color versus white. It has different colors that you can work on. Let me see if it has the, uh, I don't see the grit of this one, but it, it also uh, will receive quite a few layers of this. And I, I just like the way it feels. I have it in the plastic now, so this is good. And you can buy different sizes in this as, as well. Okay, so now for your homemade surfaces. Lay that down. And we have a few different options here. This is a technique that I learned. I got this one a little splotchy, but uh, from artist Rita Kirkman. She does beautiful work. Um, if you want to check out a good artist, I love her work. But she did this technique and I emulated what she did because I love the glow behind this. What she does is she uses this product, Golden Gel Mediums Fine Pumice Gel. Okay, it's, this is probably stuck on. No, it's not. Okay, so I have my ratio taped right to the top so I don't forget it, okay? So it's just a gel and it's sanded. It's got uh, grit to it, okay? So you can take matte board, um, gator board. Uh, you could even do this with watercolor paper, but it might warp. But you take another type of surface that's not that expensive and I like doing it. This one happens to be on matte board here. You can go to, a lot of times to framers and ask for their scraps of matte board, like the matte in a frame that you have in your uh, frames for your paintings. And sometimes you can get it free or inexpensive. So this one's just matte board. I have a way that I cut it, um, but we can talk about that in another video. But um, we're just gonna apply the sanded surface to the matte board. And what I do is I mix up this ratio one-to-one -one ratio of fluid acrylic to um, the pumice gel. This is the fluid acrylic. Now the reason, you can use any color you want, any acrylic color you want, which is one that I did here, okay? I like sometimes just, I like these uh, bright, bold colors and ones that sh still show, they're kind of transparent, they show the white still through it. It's not really opaque and dark, okay? So this was a really pretty um, cerulean blue or something that I, I used for uh, that board. So you can pick any color you want, but I happen to really love this one Rita Kirkman does. Quinacridone, I think I got that word right, Nickel Azo Gold. And uh, this little, and with the golden fluid acrylics, I love how they, they always have these three little black bars on it. They make a little stripe across it so you can see how transparent it is. You see how you can see through to see those black bars? That's why the white of the paper shows through so well with this and keeps it bright with that nice glow, okay? And this color is also a great complementary color to a lot of landscape paintings. So if you like landscapes, the greens and the blues, um, this is gonna be a great background color for you to use for those, okay? So when I mix this up one-to-one, -one, okay? So if you do... Uh, four tablespoons of this, four tablespoons of that. It's real easy. And uh, then you, uh, I keep it in a little container um, if I have extra left over so that I can use it again. When I do this, I like to kind of just make a, a, a day of it, not a whole day, but take a period of time and go ahead and make quite a few of these boards. I cut them up in different sizes because I happen to love this color. Again, this is another one you can do. I've done it in green. I had a painting that I did recently. If you want to see another color, it was a painting I have on my um, uh, YouTube channel called Joy in the Morning. Uh, it was a field of flowers, and I did it on this 
pinkish magenta red background color. Again, kind of a transparent parent color. But if I do this with my fingers, you can kind of hear that sanded surface and on this one too. I play guitar so I have an advantage of having rough fingertips. But this one's even more sanded. I must have put more pumice gel in that one. Okay, so you get the idea. Make your own pastel surfaces, okay? So now there's a couple of other ways you can do this too. These, I don't have physical examples of them, but I happen to love this product and I forget about this one too. It's a color fix primer. You can get in different colors made by Art Spectrum Fine Tooth. Again, it's similar to the pumice gel in that it already has the, the grit in it. You're making your own sandpaper. So the same thing with this one. You can get you mat board, gator board, whatever kind of surface you want. And I always use a foam brush. Um, with this one, these, and with this, I use a foam brush to apply it, okay? You could use a paint brush too. You could swirl it around if you like that impressionistic um, feel on your board, which kind of, again, makes more of an impressionistic style. So this is just a great product that you can use to make your own papers and uh, again, different colors. I, I happen to like this color too. Okay, so I've got a few of those. This is another one. It's called a dry medium pumice. I'll have to get the, uh, the recipe for this one, but it's like literally dry like sand to make your own gritty surface. So this is another product that you can use to mix with acrylics. Um, so again, lots of different um, techniques and things that we can use to make our own surfaces. Here's one that I talk about a lot in my, uh, on my YouTube channel, and I, I like this technique because it's kind of quick and easy when I'm traveling too. I happen to like watercolor as well as pastel. So often I will do a watercolor painting on watercolor paper, okay? Watercolor paper is kind of cheap, you know? Unless you buy, you know, if you're a really good watercolor ar artist and you buy the expensive ones. But this is just, I mean, you can get these at Walmart, you know? And uh, they're not that much. So I basically just will do a watercolor underpainting. Keep it really loose. It doesn't even have to be anything um, detailed. It's more just to get the mood and get some colors down. And uh, then if you want to apply pastel to your watercolor, all you do is get this product. It's called Clear Gesso. And it's a gesso product that has, and clear is a good one because if you want your watercolor painting to show through so that you can do the pastel on top, the clear allows you to do that. So this has some grit to it. Again, I would take my foam brush and apply this. I wait for the watercolor painting to dry. And then you just apply the, the liquid, I mean the clear gesso on top of it, wait for it to dry. Uh, one of my last videos, I show how I attach the watercolor paper um, to my board when doing it so it doesn't warp. Watercolor paper will bend and warp when you apply the water. So there's a neat little way you can tape it down to keep it from doing that. So that's another very inexpensive way to um, do watercolor and create your own pastel surface. Now I want to recommend something here that is a wealth of information beyond what I just described, okay? Dakota Art Pastels, www.dakotapastels.com, has an amazing catalog, okay? This catalog is going to give you uh, more information overload than you probably need right now, okay? But it is just so detailed in all of its information. It has all of the different pastels that you can buy. It gives their names and it tells whether they're soft, medium, or hard. They have them ranged from soft to medium to hard down here. I talk about a lot of these different ones in my videos. I don't have all of them, but you know, you will come to find which ones are your favorite. Again, I just went to the Mount Vision Manufacturing Company and they have a great starter set, okay? If you wanna go back and look at my video on when I toured the Mount Vision Company. Um, okay, so basically in here, I'm not gonna go through all of the, again, look at all, they have all the pastels that you can get. You can get this catalog for free. If you just contact them, they will mail it to you for free. Isn't that nice? because they want you to buy their products, right? <laughs> oh my gosh, I just get dreamy-eyed when I look at all these beautiful colors going through here. But on page, I think it's 31, I marked it. Yes, they have a great, great chart here to compare all of these different pastel surfaces, okay? We talked about um, pastel board, ampersand, I just showed you that one. I had that color, I believe. And uh, then um, Color Fix, uh, I didn't show you this. I like Color Fix paper a lot too. You can get it in a pad with all these different colors. It's a great product. Um, I actually haven't done, um, let's see, what do they call it? Pastel Matte. I know a lot of people on our uh, Facebook, Monet Cafe Art Group on Facebook use Pastel Matte very beautifully. 
And uh, again, art. There's a you art paper right here. It only comes. Well, it actually now comes in another color. It comes in a you art dark. Okay. So wow. Like I said, it can get overwhelming if you're just starting. But trust me, this will all. You'll start to get it and figure out which ones you like. But just try something, um, or even making your own surface and just have fun with it. It's more about just learning the medium and getting used to it. And uh, there's definitely time to grow and get better. Don't get frustrated at first. Just have fun. I always say that. Sometimes we feel like we're supposed to create a masterpiece and it's like, no, you're going to make a lot of bad paintings before you get good. Uh, it's like, gosh, maybe a thousand paintings before you're really, really a good artist. Um, so, oh, I don't want to scare somebody like, what? I got to paint a thousand paintings. It may not take you that long. <laughs> anyway, so this is just a great, great resource for more pastel products and things. I wanted to just give that to you guys. And as always, I focus on beginner, intermediate, and advanced artists, but my heart is really tender towards beginner artists. So this is a good way to maybe learn a little bit more at one time about what you might use and try. So now I have the wonderful opportunity to pick one of these surfaces and start a painting. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, and if you guys want a Monet Cafe coffee cup or a Monet Cafe apron, on my website, it's susanjenkinsfineart.com. It's in the about section and usually a little link at the end of the videos. You can actually go to that page and pick as seen on Monet Cafe. And in there, you'll have the links to find these. So as always, guys, happy painting and I'll see you real soon.